When you think about a popular Roblox FPS game, you probably think of Phantom Forces, Bad Business, or even Big Paintball. But one Roblox shooter not only manages to best its competitors time and time again, it also refuses to die. That game in question? Yeah, burn it up! Burn! 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 burn. <laughs> Here's the shark skin. You got some nice toes when you wear it. And I have cyclothemic decor. Today I'll be playing Arsar. The year is 2013. Selfie gets added into the dictionary, the Harlem Shake takes the internet by storm, and a small group by the name of Rolf is created. Now I wouldn't be lying if I said that finding anything from Rolf 2013 was pretty difficult, seeing as the only published game that they had at the time was Roblox Fortress 2, which would be a predecessor to one of their more popular games, Typical Colors 2 but it would only take two years for their most popular game to date to be created. On August 18th, 2015, Gun Game AK Arsenal would be released to the public. Being inspired by Counter-Strike's arms race game mode, which was essentially gun game, Arsenal would only have but one objective, race through a plethora of weapons and win. Although the game would find moderate success, it wouldn't be until 2018 where the game would really pop off. On November 27, 2018, Arsenal would have its biggest update to date. Having TC2's engine ported over to Arsenal, this would not only make development easier, but would flesh out the game even more. More than a year later, the game would receive updates like the Egg Hunt of 2019, which would add in the game's very first boss fight. Or the Halloween update of 2019, which is still regarded by many as to be one of the best updates Arsenal has ever had. Needless to say, however, 2019 would prove to be a great year for Arsenal, and 2020 could only get better, right? COVID-19, the disease that defined our lives in 2020. Travelers were scrambling to catch flights home ahead of a U.S.-imposed ban on travel from the U.K. and Ireland. Tonight, I want to speak with you about our nation's unprecedented response to the coronavirus outbreak. These are scenes from the world living with coronavirus. It has spread across cultures, languages, and even out to sea. And despite these global differences... In 2020, COVID-19 took the world by storm. To say that it didn't have lasting impacts that still hold over today would be an understatement. But, on a positive note, we got some great shows and games out of the pandemic. On March 25th, 2020, Arsenal would start the year off with a bang, winning Best Game Trailer and Game of the Year, beating out games like Royal High and Adopt Me. This would of course cause many players who didn't have their game win Game of the Year go on a tirade on Twitter of how Rolf didn't deserve it, their game stinks, it's plagued with bugs, cheaters, and really whatever else they can throw at it. All of these negative comments, however, would not stop the inevitable growth of Arsenal, with the game peaking around 64 to 65,000 players. The updates that we were getting during 2020 were very good, pretty much directly improving on what last year's did, but adding in more. Just as an example, the 2020 summer update included a battle pass for the very first time, which may or may not have had a controversial start. 
and the Halloween update of 2020 added in the game's second ever boss fight and a new live event. The Halloween shop from last year returns as well with even more goodies to get. 2020 was really good for Arsenal, with not only a boost to its player count but with the updates always delivering. With all the good stuff that happened this year, there's only really one question that I have to ask. What happened with Arsenal 2021? After the 2020 Christmas update concluded, the next update would be one of my personal favorites, Slaughter. Being pretty much inspired by FNAF, all you had to do was complete the objectives on your left, and don't get jump scared in a porta potty. Shortly after Slaughter's release, Crystal would make an announcement on Twitter about how Rolf would be taking a break from Arsenal. Now this didn't mean that they were completely giving up on Arsenal or something, but more so, just taking a break and working on different games of theirs. We would get two relatively small updates in the form of the April Fools event which gave everybody purple team for a day, god save us, and the monkey shop thingy. Yeah. Uh, congrats to you if you remember that thing. But it wouldn't be until July 6th where we would get an actual update. It's July 6th, 2021, and the summer update that we've been waiting for finally drops. To say that this update was underwhelming would only be the half of it. Promised features like competitive only servers and stage builder not showing up, and on top of that the multitude of bugs in the game at the time, like Xbox players not being able to join, people were very mixed on this update. June, it did not come out. It was late by like a week and a half because it was what, July 9th or 4th or something like that? It wasn't that great for both players and also content creators. There's really only so much we can do in it at this point. So in the future, I may be quitting Arsenal. I'm gonna talk about why Arsenal's dying, why every YouTuber's quitting, and just the overall downfall of this game. Game, 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 game. Now, I'm not gonna put the blame completely on the developers here. Yes, they did make lots of promises that probably weren't realistically possible in their time frame, but I will put some of the blame on the community for overhyping the update way too much. But in a way, again, it is justifiable seeing as we did get promised a lot of things that just did not show up at the time. So really, no one wins. But I definitely get where the community's frustration came in. Whether it be the lack of content or the repetitiveness of it all, it doesn't change the fact that we nearly waited half a year for something and yet got a whole lot of meh. But before we get off topic, once the summer update concluded and everything was said and done, Halloween was just around the corner and this next update looked to be very big. With a new boss fight on the horizon, it looked to reinvigorate the Arsenal community. And then Roblox crashed for three days. <laughs> a few months later, the Christmas update would come out and would be a breath of fresh air for the Arsenal community. An actual update. The Night's End would come out not too shortly after that near the end of the year. Editor's note, this did not come out at the end of 2021. It came out at the start of 2022. And all seemed to be well. What do I think about Arsenal 2021? Mm. This year went very, very slow. There's not a whole lot to be said about it. It started off awesome. One of the biggest updates at the time, the Slaughter event, was just released. It was incredible. But after that, not a whole lot happened for the rest of the year. I mean, summer 2021 was literally only cosmetics. Halloween 2021 was alright. But outside of the career page and cosmetics, it was just 2020's update. All the same stuff. Then the Christmas update? I can't even remember this one. There was this thing going on with the swath swords. Which was neat, but I mean, that was that. Arsenal 2021 was kind of decent for me because like, there's lots of things added that I really like, but I didn't like the all the stocks that I did, so I would just say it was not bad, just decent. 
for me. 2022 would roll around, and although we got a few notable updates, the biggest news would be A2. Essentially, what the mega update of 2018 was, but in modern day. In October, we got to have our first try in the A2 Alpha. Essentially, an early build of what A2 inspires to be. And based off of first looks, it's a good step in the right direction. If you want to see what's currently being worked on on Reloaded, I'll leave a link down below to the Trello. So, Arsenal 2022. I mean, it was a blast. I loved almost everything about it. Some things were just content updates, like the Halloween update, which I did like. I thought the items were nice and unique. But other things were really fun, like the Night's Edge update. That was a really fun thing event to do, even though it took almost a year to complete. Not even complete. I really liked Bombfest in the, in the St. Patrick's Day update. That was one of the better things about this year. I'm, I'm a little annoyed that they removed that. They did a lot of things for this game this year, even though they were working with A2. It's honestly all so fun. My favorite thing was probably the Night's Edge. Anyways, yeah, honestly, pretty good solid year. Well, some things I wish they could add was maybe all the stuff they said they were going to do, but that, yeah, pretty good year. The Night's End just recently finished its first stage with two new boss fights, and the Fate event is currently getting updated, probably leading into the second stage of the Night's End, or whatever. But with all that said, this has been a brief history of Arsenal.